Welcome to the DAC podcast. My name is Lydia Miller, and in this podcast, I'm talking through the things that I'm learning in an MBA program and how I'm applying that information to my small business. Thanks for joining me. Now let's get started. Welcome back to the DAC podcast. I am so excited that you're here today. And this episode is really, really special for me because this is the very first interview that I have ever done before. And I am so excited for you guys to hear it. I am in the middle of the marketing season of the podcast right now. That's where we're at. And along with marketing, I um, wanted to bring Amy on because she is a Story Brand certified guide. And if you've never heard of Story Brand before, she's going to explain it in a few minutes, but it's a book written by Donald Miller and it's really about telling your story for your brand, which is why it's called Story Brand. And really it brings in a lot of elements to storytelling and things that we um, naturally connect with, I think, as humans and as people. And it brings it out with your branding. And every time I've seen this done, it's done, it's really done well. It can be done really well. And Amy definitely is phenomenal at it. I first met her through social media and I can't remember who followed who first or anything, but I have loved following her on Instagram and getting tips around marketing and story brand and really watching her use her brand in a story brand way. It's been Um, really inspirational for me to follow um, a similar path for marketing. And I really appreciate her um, coming on and sharing a lot of this today. And before we jump into the interview, I would just want to let you know of a few things I've been updating you on my MBA progress throughout this podcast. I just want to do that again briefly. Um, I'm on my last two classes for my MBA. I'm in communications and ethics right now. And I think the communications class, I am already so looking forward to that series on the podcast because it has been very transformational for me. I am not naturally a good writer or a good speaker. Um, If I'm being honest, part of starting this podcast was to practice speaking and to practice communicating more. And I started the podcast before I took this class and I kind of wish I would have had it first because a lot of the things that I'm learning are so applicable and practical and I really appreciate just all the things that I've been learning. I have a few textbooks that I actually rented for this semester for this class and I'm planning on purchasing them at the end of the semester because they are just packed with great information and I um, am really excited about this class because I think it's going to really round out this education um, that I've been getting for my MBA and for what I've been for what I'm doing and what I will be doing. I didn't think that when I was an undergrad that I would use this information quite as much as I do now only because I figured I would be in a cubicle or I'd be at a desk all day doing accounting and I wouldn't necessarily need communications but the more I've progressed into my career the more I've realized that it's an essential tool for any professional at any stage and I would highly recommend if you Um, want to be a better communicator to maybe just take a class or read some of this or read story brand or do any do something to help sharpen that skill because I think it really does take you up a notch professionally whenever you can be a better communicator and be a a better writer and communicate um, what you're what you're doing better um, for your career I think it's so so important and I I knew the value of it but I've really seen the value the last few weeks as I've been taking this class and the other class I'm taking is ethics and um, it's a good class Um, it's um, kind of dry if I'm being honest we're talking about like corporate governance and board of directors and things that aren't bad things to know but it's not quite as exciting as other classes so that's kind of where I'm at right now I'm just kind of getting through that and I um, yeah, I'm just trying to get through that class at this point. Okay. So second, I am shifting my focus in my business. I think a lot of this comes back to story brand and the problem that you're solving and all of those things. And I've been thinking through this a lot in the last few months. So background, I started a bookkeeping business two years ago. Fast forward, I'm working in it full time, getting my MBA. I got my MBA at first to learn how to be a better business owner. And now I'm using that information to help other businesses, which is not a path I thought I would be on. And so now I've realized that I have a better strength in consulting and I have a better strength instead of just doing the month to month work for bookkeeping clients, which I thought that's what my career would be, but I don't 
necessarily think that anymore is that I really love helping people understand QuickBooks better, understand the accounting behind it, understanding more things in their business, apply my MBA and practical knowledge. And so I'm going to shift to that. And I think this is a great lesson, especially if you are working from home, you have your own business and it's not working out how you thought to be able to step back and really critically analyze what do you enjoy doing? Like where are your strengths whenever you're done with a project? What projects really make you want to do more? What do you want to do more of? And find a way to do that. This was not easy to admit to myself that my ideal, what I was going to be doing for the rest of my life isn't quite what I thought it was going to be. That wasn't easy to admit to myself. But I think with with anything, you have to really decide um, what you, um, I guess just what you want to be doing. And if, and if you're doing something and it's not necessarily what you want to be doing, you have to decide if this is just a season that you're doing it in, or if you can change. And I have decided to shift my business focus to that. I'm going to be working on that the next couple months, really, um, defining that, changing my website up, um, really getting all the tools in place so that I can fully move into that into the new year. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think I've prayed a lot about it. And I think that this really is the path that I need to take at this point and to change. So just some encouragement if you um, are thinking about changing something in your business, but you're scared to do it, um, it's, it's okay. Like you don't have to stick with the original business that you started with whenever you started on your entrepreneurial journey. It's okay to change. Um, and that's what I'm going to be doing. So I wanted to be open and honest with that as I have, um, started shifting and learning about new things in the industry as far as accounting goes. And I just want to let you guys know. So like I've mentioned today already, my interview today is with Amy Schutte. And Amy is a marketing and brand strategist for business and entrepreneurs. And she is a story brand certified guide. And she is a published writer and she has work that's featured in local and national publications. And she has worked in marketing for a while um, before she started her own marketing company. She worked as an award-winning journalist, and she really does have the credentials to be talking about story brand and how to do this, and I am so excited for you to hear our interview, and here it is. Here's my interview with Amy Schutte. Welcome to the podcast, Amy. I am so glad that you're here today to talk about story brand with us. Welcome. Thank you. I'm really excited to be on here. Yeah. Okay. So my first question is what led you to want to start a business? Let's start there. Ooh, okay. Um, that's a great question. I think I've always been an entrepreneur. My, mm-hmm. my dad was an entrepreneur. And so about six years ago, actually, I started a small uh, children's entertainment business. So we'd dress up and go to kids' little birthday parties, which was really mm-hmm. fun. Um, so I've been, I've been in the entrepreneurial space for a while, but uh, about two years ago after I had my son, I realized I really wanted some more time and some mm-hmm. space to be with him. And yeah. so I decided to go back to my marketing roots, which is mm-hmm. uh, my background in journalism and marketing. And so I mm-hmm. uh, decided to go back there and start actually – making an impact in my local community and that mm-hmm. luckily spread to clients all over the U.S. So, wow. That's yeah. Cool. So it's just been, yeah, a desire to have freedom, a desire to have flexibility yeah. um, and a desire to move, move quick and fast and have a big mm-hmm. impact. So, yeah, that must've been hard yeah. to move from the um, business where you're like going out to like doing more at home. Is that kind of how it happened where it was a whole new like clientele or did you get a lot of clients? Yes. That? Or how did No, you- that is totally different businesses, totally wow. different. Um, before I was working with, you know, mamas with their kids, which was really fun to do birthday parties. Um, mm-hmm. and that was just cause it was like a fun, like dream of mine to do that. But marketing and moving into that professional space is really what my corporate background is in. So, mm-hmm. uh, but because I had such a great corporate background and great networks in my mm-hmm. community, um, it's been a really easy transition. So I work with a lot of people that I used to work with in different aspects, but just in a new way now. That's awesome. That's really nice. Cause I think yeah. that for, at least for me, that was kind of hard to jump from 
like a career and then to be on my own and then not have a client base. I kind of thought that, oh, the clients will flock to me because I'm in business and that, you know, definitely does not quite happen. <laughs> it yes. Happen. yes, it is hard. Yeah. It is hard. And I always tell people when they're going into business, you know, start with the people, you know, start mm-hmm. with your local network because they already know, like, and trust you. Mm-hmm. And it's so much easier when you already have a relationship with them mm-hmm. than trying to get more of that cold call angle. So yeah. I haven't had to do that yet. Um, yeah. Most of my clients are people who I've known for a long time, which is a huge benefit of doing a service-based business um, in your local area. Oh, for sure. And I think it helps too that you are a story brand expert. So I think that helps like with the no like, and trust factor from everything. So can you tell me a little bit about story brand and what it is? Because I ha- I'll admit I have the book, but I haven't read it yet. And I know that I should read it. But, so give us the lowdown. Of <laughs> you should definitely read the book. I know, um, it's so yeah, I'm not part of the story brand family, but I am a story brand certified guide. So they're okay. a little bit different. So story brand as a whole is this amazing company. And I urge people, Donald Miller wrote this beautiful book that you have that you should definitely read. It's, <laughs> it's worth um, reading. It's a quick read too. It's very it's a quick read and it's easy to get some wins off of that pretty quickly. Um, But from there they have a guide certification program for uh, marketers to go through and then you can be certified as a guide and then you use, you can use their framework um, and you're part of their guide community. So Mm -hmm. it's really great. And I discovered story brands, I think right after I quit my corporate job to come home with my son, um, I've always been a Donald Miller fan and I used to love his books. And then I found his podcast and consumed all of them and decided this was going to be um, one of the best ways just to give, you know, when you leave the corporate world or your career, Mm -hmm. it can be a a little intimidating to be like, ah, why should people listen to me? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you experienced that, but um So for me, it was so nice to have a community and a framework that I could fall back on and um, really know that it works and that it's it's worked so great for my clients. So I'm going to continue to keep using this wonderful framework Mm because the story is powerful. So absolutely. uh, Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what I guess drew you into story brand was just, um, I guess the value that you could see for your clients and the whole framework for what they're doing. Cause I think it's a little bit different than regular marketing, right? That's more based on Mm -hmm. um, obviously like stories and everything, but how is it like different in some of those ways? Cause marketing for, at least for me, it seems kind of like this mystical thing. I don't know. I'm a numbers person. So marketing always seemed like, (laughs) does anyone really know what they're doing or is everyone just making it up or like, how is this even working? Like, so how, how does it work with the story aspect of it? Cause I think that's how a lot of people connect with it. Sure. Oh, I love that question because I think marketing is really overwhelming for people. Uh, because there's, when you say marketing, that can mean (laughs) <laughs> One million different things, yes. right? Yes. Um, and so my past life, I used to be a journalist, and then I moved into uh, marketing. And so story has always been really important to me mm-hmm. as a writer. Um, and so I think that's why I initially started paying more attention to story brand was because I know how powerful stories are. They connect people. They change people. The, the paradigm shift with um, the story brand framework that is different from, I think, what other marketers do is it really helps people understand how to position themselves in the marketplace as the guide in the story rather than the hero. Mm -hmm. And so you see this happen all the time, I'm sure. And it's harder in personal brands too, where Mm -hmm. you kind of are your hero of your brand, but um, taking a step back and figuring out how can I really guide people to success? How can I empathize with them? and really show them a really clear process to win. Mm. And so um, I think that's where the framework is different than a lot of other marketing. I just gave a talk uh, two days ago to a group of business leaders and we were talking about their websites and billboards. And, you know, a lot of them were like, well, I just put up a billboard and it said, you know, teamwork makes the dream work or something like that. And you're like, that doesn't (laughs) say anything. Like, so the thing with story brand is it helps people understand how to cut through the clutter, how your brain works and how to really 
put simple, clear messages out into the world that enter into your customer's narrative instead of just pushing your story out on everybody. Mm. And I love that where you're making your client the hero instead of you the hero. Um, I think that I had seen that before now that you say that and I think that's really powerful because a lot of these things you see especially with personal brands because like you said it's easy because we are kind of we can't fall back on just the company because it's us that's doing the work and everything so I think that's really interesting so what it's like one way you could actually do that in like an Instagram post or in your marketing like how do you make the client the hero instead of you uh, and, and for you being the guide like what's would be like an example of that I guess Ah, uh, that's a beautiful question. So Insta- let's talk about Instagram because I love Instagram. Yes, that's like my favorite <laughs> uh, social media channel. Yes. I know. I think that's how we connected. We do. Instagram is great. Yeah. So um, I think taking parts of the story framework and then working it into how you post on different social media channels is really powerful. So mm-hmm. Instagram's fun because you can do all sorts of fun mm-hmm. stories and um, there's no real formula that story brands does for Instagram specifically, they really focus more on like your websites and your email funnels and Mm, stuff like that. But what I love about Instagram and here's my tip for everyone else is really before you post, think about how will this impact the people that I am trying to reach? So Mm -hmm. whether they're an ideal client or not, but how can you be responsible with the people that are consuming your content, especially on Instagram? And so if you're trying to, Instagram's fun, it's not necessarily a sales place where you're pushing Mm -hmm. selling all the time but giving people a clear process of you know this is these are the steps to get here with whatever you're trying to do um or they always say at story brand you know if they if you stop talking about the problem or the problem is solved there's no longer a story so always kind of talking about this problem that your customer is facing so if that's overwhelmed with marketing um or if that's overwhelmed with quickbooks or whatever Mm -hmm. you know if you're so stressed out about your taxes and it's just talk about that and talk about how that feels for people Mm -hmm. uh, and then offer them a you know a tiny solution like here's here's a glimmer of hope here's how you can work with me and I can help you do this yeah. And now that you say that, I think I've realized that a little bit that um, I don't necessarily want to see posts from other people that say that are just selling, selling, selling all the time. But whenever somebody solves a problem in a post or whenever someone posts about this is how you solve whatever, this is what this actually is, or just like clarify something. I I remember those posts more and I go back to them and think, okay, where did she say that? Or I'll screenshot it and I'll keep it. So I never really thought about it that way though, that anytime you're posting, you need to be solving a problem for somebody and kind of helping them instead of just selling and saying, oh, I have this new thing out. I have this new thing out. I have this new thing out. Cause I think that was my, um, and, and you, you probably weren't this way because you, you knew all this, but whenever I first started, I thought I just need to, every post needs to be what I do, what I do, what I do so that I can get clients and, that for sure did not work. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Um, and I think go ahead. that's powerful that you recognize that just because mm-hmm. I think so much, I think we are, especially as women, I think we get nervous to sell. And so it's easy to Instagram kind of like that. Here's my pretty picture, but also mm-hmm. call me for a strategy session. Yeah. <laughs> but really when you're talking about, you know, Hey, are you so overwhelmed by this? Or are you so frustrated by this? You know, it doesn't have to be that way. There mm-hmm. is hope. Yeah. You can kind of lead people to that over a couple mm-hmm. different posts. It's not like you have to do the whole thing in one mm-hmm. post, but um, that changes the game for people consuming your content because mm-hmm. they know that you're really there to provide value and not mm-hmm. just push, push your story mm-hmm. on them. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I'm going to have to redo my Instagram for next week with that information. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back to my scheduled posts and make sure that I do that. That's really great. Um, so... As far as story brand goes in marketing, I think I've always had this idea that to be in marketing, you have to be super creative and that you have to be really like artsy and like not analytical at all. Is that true, do you think? Or do you think that you have to be a super creative person to be good with the story brand? Or do you think that anyone can really take this or what aspects do you think are necessary to do this? That's a great question. And I think marketing... Because marketing is so big, I think every type of person is needed. And if you have a business and you're like, oh, I'm not creative, 
that doesn't mean you can't be marketing your stuff mm -hmm. well. Um, I think what I love about the story brand framework specifically is that it simplifies things for people and it's really less about being clever and more about being clear mm -hmm. because if people can't understand what you do, uh, they're, they're out of there. They're yeah. going to run away. It's too hard. So as far as the analytical brain, I wish I had more of that because <laughs> analyzing all the data, you know, on yeah. your website and how all your posts are doing, mm -hmm. um, that is so critical to marketing. So, but I always tell people, you don't have to be good at everything. Stay in your scope of genius mm -hmm. and then hire the rest of that out mm -hmm. <laughs> I, because, um, that's, there's, there's not enough time to be good at all of the things. So yeah. pick your thing that you love, that you're so good at, get really, really good at that. And then you can start adding other things on. We live in a world where you can learn anything mm -hmm. right away, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, their kind of motto is like, if you confuse, you lose. So mm -hmm. the cleverness piece, I mean, that's fun to add in later. Mm -hmm. And visually you can do really cool stuff with graphics, but when it comes to your words, um, simple and clear is always better than clever. I love that. And I know that it's, it's hard to be clear. Like I think it's hard to be clear in writing sometimes just because the, my natural tendency when I'm thinking that I'm marketing is I have to be clever and I have to make this really like memorable posts. But I think what you said about just being clear is a lot more powerful, like you said, than being clever. And I love that. I've never thought about it that way before, but yeah, that's, yeah. That's really important. And I like what you said too about um, getting really, really good at one thing or that thing that you're good at and just kind of staying in that space right there and then um, being able to um, be so good at that that you can hire the rest of the things out <laughs> that you're not good at. Yes. I think, that's key too. <laughs> I think when I first started that, I thought, and you're probably the same way, that I thought I had to be good at everything and that every aspect of it. And then I ended up being good at nothing <laughs> for a long time. So I think the sooner that you, that anyone can learn to just be good at that one thing, the better off it'll be in the long run. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. that that's really wise. That's awesome. Okay. So um, what makes a great story do you think i think you've already answered this with just being clear mm. instead of clever i love that i can't get over that i'm gonna have to like write that down <laughs> and, like, <take laughs> well to i will contribute that always to the story brand team i didn't come up with that but i do think you know coming from my journalism background you have only a short amount of space to mm -hmm. tell a story and yeah. the clearer you are um the better. I mean, mm -hmm. really, people are consuming things so quickly nowadays. We see mm -hmm. so many messages that if you're not putting out messaging that is clear and concise and simple and enters into your customer's problem, mm -hmm. uh, and it's just noise, right? So yeah. as far as what makes a good story, um, I think the framework that they use is very simple. I mean, mm -hmm. there's always a character that has a problem that mm -hmm. meets a guide calls them to action and gives them a plan, leads them to success. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like the basic story wow. that yeah. we see in movies and that we read in books. Of course, it gets more complicated. But for mm -hmm. storytelling within our businesses, um, always making sure you set yourself up as the guide to really empathize with people and say, I know how hard marketing is. I mm -hmm. get that. Like, I've been there. Here's mm -hmm. how we're going to do it. It's going to be really easy. One, two, three, mm -hmm. and call them to action. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's what makes a really good story. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you can get crazy with storytelling. And I love meeting those people that are just, they've got a story mm -hmm. for everything and it's always mm -hmm. intriguing. But yeah. always going back, especially in your own marketing, to just trying to be as clear as possible so that people understand mm -hmm. why they should go to you and not someone else. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, I think it's important to know what problem you're solving. So how did you kind of figure that out, like what problem that you're solving for your customers? What was that process like for you to figure that out? Ooh, that's a good one. And I think I'm still trying to figure that out because I think uh, <laughs> to be really honest, right? Because yeah. going back to the trying to be good at everything piece, mm -hmm. I think especially when we start out in business, we're like, oh, we can do that. I'll mm -hmm. take that on. Of mm -hmm. course I can do that for you. And I think a lot of that comes from that scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. But what I found in the last little bit of really niching down and trying to figure out what um, what is best for me and what is best for my clients mm -hmm. is, you know, that takes some time and it's not something you can come out of the gate with unless you've, I think it just takes, it takes some time to get to really comfortable with your business and what you're going to offer and the packages you offer. Mm -hmm. So the problems that I love to solve, especially is I love that clarity piece. 
-hmm. as a writer, that's my sweet spot. I love writing. I love the strategy piece, the figuring out Mm -hmm. um, what is your business and how can we get you really not everywhere, but really connected to the people who need you most. Mm -hmm. So the strategy and the coaching, and I end up being kind of, I think marketing and has a lot to do with, you know, purpose. And so what I found working with my clients, a lot of them are women. I have a lot of men clients too, but the women especially struggle so much with the stories they've told themselves for years that they're not good enough to be charging this or whatever it is. And so my sweet spot is really helping them get that confidence mm-hmm. to, to stand out and then be able to charge a lot and make a lot and have a great business. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, love. so I guess for reference, how long have you been doing um, this business? I think you said it a second ago, but how long have you been focusing on um, this business that you're in right now? So, yeah, I've been in business for about a year and a half on my own. Okay. Um, I got certified with StoryBrand in February. So uh, doing it their way has been not a huge change from what I've been doing, but it has mm-hmm. been helpful um, in growing my my business and kind of helping me niche mm-hmm. down. But so, so yeah, it's been about, I don't know, about seven months. I'm doing math in my head. You're the you're the number girl. <laughs> so oh gosh, yeah, seven months. When I started doing doing story brand. Yeah, about seven months. Yeah. Okay. So this is not an overnight process for figuring out your brand. Correct. Right. I think brand takes a lot of time and consistency, um, and especially when you're just starting out too. I love helping people with the branding, the visual side of things too, because I think there's nothing like beautiful brand, Mm -hmm. but I always urge people right off the bat, unless you are really certain about what offerings you have and who you're going to be, um, don't go spend a ton of money on logos and stuff right away. Mm -hmm. Take time to really just do the work Mm -hmm. and figure it out and figure out what you love and what you're good at. And then when you're ready, you'll be, it'll be so much easier to, to go forward with a, a strong brand and a strong message. But right. that beginning stage is just kind of getting your people in the door and figuring yeah. out what works. I, yeah, I agree with that so much because especially it's hard whenever you start a business and it's one thing and then a year later you're like, this is not working. But just like admitting that to yourself and figuring out what am I good at? Like what do I want this to look like in five years and what do I need to be doing for that? I think um, – I think that's really difficult in the first couple of years trying to figure that out and trying to um, just, uh, just be okay with changing yourself, being okay with changing your brand. Um, and I think yes. going through the story brand process or reading the book could, would be really helpful. I'm telling myself I need, I need, I need to read it this weekend. <laughs> yes, need, Lydia, you do. It's so good. <laughs> yes. I need, to, I need to put it by my bed so that I'll read it this weekend. Um, so I guess, um, as far as using story brand in like your website and everything. So um, from what I'm hearing, it should be your website should be really clear and you should really be able to, someone should be able to identify the problem that you're solving first off. Or do you think that there should be like a buffer there or when someone goes to their website, what should their first impression be? If you're using the story brand guide, how should that, Yes, that's a great question. I, you know, you have eight seconds when people come to your website Mm. to keep them there. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty quick. Um, so I think visuals are really important. You know, if that header photo can Mm. show an aspirational look of what your customer's life will look like after you've worked with them or give Mm. some sort of authority there, but defining who you, you know, who you do things for and what problem you're solving Mm -hmm. right off the bat. And then having a call to action. Um, John calls it like the, the marry me button, like the buy now button. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, especially in the creative industry, I found this actually a lot working with photographers and some of the more creative artsy people. They're like, Mm -hmm. Oh, that kind of ruins the purity of the website to have all Mm -hmm. these like buy now schedule an appointment, whatever. But Mm -hmm as far as actually people need something to accept or reject. And Mm -hmm. so um, you need to have that on your website sprinkled in and you need to tell people what to do. Mm -hmm. I think one of the best things that they recommend for websites, giving people a process plan, like here's step one, here's Mm -hmm. step two, here's step three, Mm -hmm. because people just need to, I think we think we're being clear and that it's, Oh, well, I'm a photographer, so they should be able to just 
figure it out and call me. But yeah. people love to know what that process looks like, even like on mac and cheese boxes, right? It's like, yeah. put the water in, do this thing, eat the food. <laughs> and so yeah. even it's so simple or put it in the toaster or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, we, our brains just need that. We just need it. So having clear call to actions, a process plan, um, and then help then continuously talking about the success that people will see when they, you know, after they work with you, um, and then establishing yourself not as the hero, but as the, the guide and what you're trying to write on your homepage, which is, this all sounds easy, but it's actually, you know, it's challenging, which is why, <laughs> which is why people like me are around to help you out. So. Yes, absolutely. Cause even, um, whenever I've been like writing different things for school and the assignment was just like, do a very concise um, summary of this. And oh my gosh, took me forever to get everything in there and to make it sound like it works. And so after I was done with that, I was like, I am not going into writing. I'm not going into writing. (laughs) This is so hard. So I definitely think um, that that's where like you said, like where your sweet spot is that you're really good at that. So, and I was looking at your website earlier and I think your website is a beautiful example of all of what you just talked Thank about. You. And I love that you broke that down for us and the thought process behind it um, to be able to do that. So um, if you could just tell us kind of what you're offering, where your website, where we can, everyone can connect with you. Everyone needs to follow her on Instagram because her Instagram is beautiful and you'll be encouraged when you see it. So tell us all the places we can find you. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you. Well, my website is amyshooty.com. So shooty is spelled S-C-H-U-T-T-E. And you can find me on Instagram at amyshooty, um, which is the underscore. And then on in, on Facebook, it's just amyshooty LLC. So um, yeah, I'd love to help anyone. I love working with entrepreneurs and small businesses. So I love helping people clarify their message, really make sure that their website is mm-hmm. tip top shape and working for you. And then um I also love helping people with their like lead generators and their email marketing mm-hmm. just to get, get people, mm-hmm. get people in your funnel so you can really have an impact and talk to them. But yeah, it depends on each business. So it's always, it's always a little bit different, but um, yeah, that's where you can find me. So. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Amy, thank you so much for being here today and sharing all you shared. And um, I'm going to read story brand this weekend and I'll tell you. Yes, <laughs> do. I encourage everyone to do that. And they have yes. a, a free online, um, the framework on there that you can go in and type in your story and kind of test it out. And it's called mystorybrand.com. It's a fabulous tool. It's amazing. So, and it's just, uh, there's obviously you have to take those different story buckets and kind of wordsmith it into what you're doing. But if you can get really clear on what problem you're solving and who your character is, and that's part of that niching down process, Mm -hmm. what are they struggling with? Mm -hmm. Um, everything gets, so much easier after that. So Absolutely. it's good for you. It's good for your customer. Absolutely. I love it. Well, again, Amy, thank you so much for being here. I so much thank appreciate you. it.